everyone and welcome back to another video. Thank you so much for joining in. Metal Gear Solid 4. It's 2025 now and this game is still a prisoner to the PS3 library. No shit. Back in 2023, upon my first time testing the game, it was an absolute nightmare with a lot of crashes, bugs and setting issues. But in 2025, it's absolutely amazing to see how much easily playable it has become. In my recent installation and testing of the game using my same old set settings but with newer patches, I had a smoother than ever before experience. This is why I'm making this video which will be a complete guide for the best experience on Metal Gear Solid 4 in 2025. Here's a small overview for people who are still relatively new to RPCS3. RPCS3 is still an in-development emulator with regular updates and it's important to note that the PS3 hardware and complexities of the architecture present significant challenges for emulation. So one must understand the use and importance of settings and patches and find what's best on their system. Let's talk about system requirements and compatibility. Now there's four levels of compatibility in order from most to least playable. Number one is playable, followed by in-game, then intro, and nothing. Metal Gear Solid 4 falls under the category of in-game, which means it can boot up, reach gameplays, but it suffers from significant issues such as crashes, graphical issues, or performance problems. Now let's talk about the system requirements. Firstly, on CPU, you need to have a minimum of 6 cores, 6 threads such as the i5-8600 or 9600K if you're using Intel processors or the Ryzen 5 2600 if you're on AMD side. For GPU, you will need at least a GDX 1063 GB for Nvidia users or an RX 570 if you're using an AMD GPU. The RAM I would recommend would be at least 8 GB but I would heavily recommend 16 GB for best performance. Lastly, this is strictly optional but believe me when I tell you this, an SSD would make shader compilation much faster and reduce loading times, enhancing your experience totally. Now let's talk about game installation and updates. Number one, you have to make sure that you have the BLUS3109 serial of the game and the version is 2.00. If you need to update your game, you will need to use Rust PSN. You will find a link in the description below. After installation, open the program and click on title serial. Type BLUS3109 and click search for updates. Then download the update, which will be about 550 MB in size. When it's complete, click on settings tab here to see where your downloads directory is located. Then come back to RPCS3, click on file and go down to install packages wraps and then select the update file from the folder referenced previously for downloads. Now here's the PKGs folder I selected and when you access it, there's the update. Just left click and it'll work, taking only a few seconds. I already have applied the update so I'm not going to do it again. That's it for the installation and update. Moving on to settings and patches. Let's start with the CPU tab. Set PPU and SPU decoders to LLVM. Set SPU xload accuracy to relaxed and block size to safe. Enable SPU loop detection. On GPU tab, set Vulkan as your renderer, GPU as graphics device and set Frame limit to 60, AA is on automatic and anisotropic filtering to 16x, shader quality to high and lastly ZCULL accuracy to precise. On your resolution scale, select resolution that fits with your specifications. For me, 1440p is optimal. Set your resolution scale to 1 by 1 and output scaling to nearest. Select async as shader mode. On additional settings, make sure to enable right color buffers, vSync and multi-threaded RSX. Now moving on to the audio tab, select QBEB as the audio output and enable buffering 120 milliseconds. Moving on to advanced settings, make sure to enable right depth buffers and read color buffers. On core tab, enable these three accurate RSX reservation access, PPU non-Java mode fixup, PPU SPU LLVM pre-compilation, set RSX FIFO accuracy to atomic, driver wake-up delay to 200 nanoseconds, reblank frequency to 60 Hz and sleep timers accuracy to you sleep only. Lastly, set unlimited as the maximum number of threads. Now these options on firmware libraries are optional, according to RPCS3 they should be enabled for cutscenes to play properly, but I personally didn't find much difference with enabling it so it's optional. Now let's move on to patches. Left click on manage and access game patches. If an update is available, click on yes. On MGS4, BLUS3109. After patch file is updated, click on MGS4, BLUS3109. Enable Salesforce hack for 4.89 PS3 firmware. If you need this specific version of firmware, there is a link in description below. 
4.89 is highly recommended for Metal Gear Solid 4. Now come down to BLUS 3109 and enable these exact same patches. These improve performance tremendously, but if you still prefer more at the cost of degrading visuals, make sure to enable reduced stage quality and you're all set. To summarize, number one, shader compilation is going to take a lot of time if you're using hard drive, so I highly recommend SSD. Number two, make sure that your game version is BLUS 3109 and the version is 2.00. Number three, make sure to meet the system requirements and the settings and the patches have all been covered up. And that's it. Now we're moving on to gameplay so you guys can see what the performance is like. If if you have any questions, need any help, feel free to let me know in the comments down below or join my server and I'll help you over there. Please take care, stay safe, stay blessed and remember, this is just the beginning. Commencing Operation Gameplay now. Come on. I'll take care of Rex, you take Vamp. Kill that monster! Get Naomi back, Snake! Please!
where to aim. Put a bullet through there. Snake? <laughs>